Well, there is some potentially big news out of Massachusetts. Lawmakers there may approve a measure to bypass the electoral college system, essentially, in the upcoming presidential elections. Five other states are already on board with this plan. So what exactly does this mean for the 2012 presidential election and beyond? Michael Reagan is a syndicated radio host with Reagan.com and chairman of the Reagan Group. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? I I'm great. Thanks so much for being here. All right, so this, you know, the Electoral College sort of boggles the mind for most folks, but basically the way it works is you don't vote directly for the presidential candidate when you go to vote. You vote for, vote for electors, and your state has more mm -hmm. electors uh, depending on how many members in the House of Representatives you have, uh, representatives you have, to boil it down. And this would change it so it's basically the majority vote is going to dictate who becomes the president. So the, the people behind this movement say, for, so for example, in, in the 2000 election, Al Gore would have become our president instead of George Bush. And, and the downside to this is what? Well, the downside is that, that all the states then won't be represented in electing the president of the United States of America. I mean, my father, if you were alive, you were talking to him, Megan, he would say, well, there they go again. I mean, they haven't <laughs> stopped. Uh, what's going on with 2012 is there's a great worry in the Obama administration and the left. In fact, Barack Obama is going to be a one-term president. So how do you now solidify that, in fact, he could be more than one term? Well, you change the Electoral College where it's the, you know, the majority of the votes. So you lock up a New York, a Los Angeles, a Chicago, a Massachusetts, whatever it might be, those, those liberal states, the ones that all vote Democrat, they're the big populous states. And then Nebraska has no voice, Iowa has no voice, the whole center part of the country that does not agree with what's going on in Washington at all would basically not have a voice in the election of 2012. And this is where they want to go with this, and it really needs to be stopped now. Their response seems to be that states like New York and California right now are largely ignored in the presidential elections because there's an assumption that New York's going to go Democrat, California probably Democrat, uh, um, Texas is going to go Republican and so on. And so they say this will get the candidates, you know, more into these states. So it's not all about Ohio and Pennsylvania. You know, they'll have to go to the states that, that are the most populated. Listen, they're not going to Wyoming and Montana. They're going to New York. They're going to California. They're going to Texas. They're going to Illinois. Why? Because of the Electoral College and Electoral votes. They're, in fact, there. There's a plethora of votes in those areas. But the fact of the matter is they're not showing up in the smaller states. They don't go to Utah. They don't go to Nebraska. They don't go to Iowa. They stay in those states. But at least those other states do have a voice when it comes election time. If they're having a problem with it, find better candidates. Ronald Reagan won New York. Ronald Reagan won Texas. Ronald Reagan won Illinois. Ronald Reagan won California. So find better candidates that can, in fact, speak across party lines, bring people together, and get elected to the presidency of the United States. Once you, once you get elected, stay the course. Don't go off course like happened in eight years of the Bush presidency. It's this group called the National Popular Vote that's behind it, and they're pushing for these state legislatures to do it. Five more states, uh, are, or five states have already joined, uh, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, and Washington. And now Massachusetts could be the sixth, and they're also looking at it in California, Colorado, Rhode Island, and Vermont. The thought, Michael, is that if you get enough states, if you get states that have a total of 271 electoral votes, if they mm -hmm. all sign on to this compact, and the compact would be we will, our electors will, will cast their ballots for whoever wins the national majority vote. So if you get, they say that essentially the way this will work is 11 states could band together and elect the president. 11 states yeah, could, and, could do it. If you really think about it, look at 1984. Walter Mondale won uh, Minnesota. But under that program, Minnesota wouldn't have had a voice because all the electoral votes would have gone to Ronald Reagan. And so what happens is they end up taking away the voice of all the other states. Is this, is, so is this a Democratic thing versus a Republican? Like, are the people behind this national popular vote Democrats who want to change the system? They keep referring back to 2000, I, what happened with Bush versus Gore. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would imagine they are from the left side of the spectrum, certainly not the right side of the spectrum, who wants to stay with the Constitution, the way it was set up, the way it is working. Uh, they like the way it works. We like the way it works. It's the left. It isn't happy, and they're trying to do whatever they can to solidify the power base in Washington, D.C. And if it takes changing the Electoral College, that's what they're going to do. People need not to pay attention to it. 
Understand, right now you have a voice. Under this program, you'll lose it. Wow. This is, again, the states that are considering it right now. California, Colorado, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Uh, also New York, apparently. And uh, who knows where this could go. Can you imagine how this could change presidential politics? Michael Reagan, you're somebody who knows a thing or two about those. Love the invitation of your dad. Thanks so much. You got it. Thanks a lot. Anytime. All right.